herd seems unable to ignore the infant's plight. The elephants return, dispersing the hyenas and shepherding the orphan away into the night. placed trunk that finally does the job. But the matriarch knows they cannot leave without completely satisfying their thirst. They have a long journey still ahead. Again, the infants are most at risk, and this time it's the adopted calf that's knocked into the mud. The mud is thicker here. The calf is in peril. The matriarch goes to assist her adopted son, and others follow her example and clamber into the mud. Desperate attempts to break down the bank only make the problem worse. The calf settles deeper into the mire. The two females work together with toes, trunks and legs to stop him sinking. Another female digs a ramp. They squeeze and push until, suddenly, the suction releases. And he struggles free, the second time he's been rescued in his short life. Still concerned, the females encourage the dazed youngster to walk among them as they touch and smell him reassuringly. Then they bunch up as more buffaloes approach. To the outrage of the elephants, the buffaloes continue to pour from the forest in a seemingly endless flood. The waterhole seems more like a battlefield as confusion reigns. The confrontation slowly resolves, though not without casualty. This young buffalo has taken a blow on its head and side. Its injuries are severe. It has reached the end of its own short journey. The two calves follow the matriarch as she leads her family group away from this meeting place of the clans. The young buffalo is not yet dead. Its weak movements arouse the elephant's curiosity. The 
perhaps their awareness of injury extends to other kinds of animals. They're certainly very concerned when one of their own is in trouble. Far away, a company of bulls circle in the sunrise. This place is for bulls alone. They come here when they leave their mothers, and as they age and grow, they seek rank and position among their peers. sounds and smells offer challenges or quiet submissions. Newcomers must secure a place among these ranks. When old enough to mate, a bull's status in this hierarchy profoundly affects his chances of success. There are contests vital to the quality of future offspring, essential tournaments of giants. Seniority is determined by size and age, and occasionally by a duel of tusks. The contest is for water, priority of access to a meager supply. Some 200 elephants compete for it in this bull area at Savuti in Botswana. In any confrontation, it's wise to watch your back. A sensitive tail does just that. gets a little crowded, use your head to get the precious liquid. Sometimes tusks are brandished in this jostle for water. But this is no free-for-all. The combatants know their place. And when elephants do change rank, the orderly pecking order is soon re-established. This old bull is coming for water, but will be unable to compete. Age has sapped his vitality. Sagging body looks starved. Probably the last of the succession of huge grinding teeth replaced throughout his 60 odd years are wearing out. He can no longer eat. Weak from hunger, he can only watch the competing bulls and wait for a chance to drink. the heat drains moisture from his body. Seeing there are few bulls of the water, he makes his approach. His full height is intimidating. He forces his way in and manages at last to relieve his thirst. Mud-caked dominant bull arrives. The old bull should give way, but the water beckons him. It's a fatal mistake. A 
sharp tusk in the dark gouges his neck. The old bull sinks down, the wound gushing blood. While the fallen bull still clings to life, a young male attempts to mount it, a display of mock mating perhaps intended as a show of dominance that might raise his own rank. Here, status is everything. During the night, the bull dies. A natural end for this veteran of the plains. Hyenas close in, despite protests by the elephants. But the dead must be consumed, and the scavengers begin the attack. Elephants seem to find something about death that holds a special fascination. Just what the funeral explorations mean is still unknown. Recognition, tribute, sorrow, who knows? And why should the touching and smelling of the ivory seem so significant a part of all this behavior? by, the carcass shrinking day by day. All Africa is the elephant's graveyard, their bones and tusks just scattered where they fall. And the bulls will retain their interest in the bones long after they've been picked clean. disintegration of so large an animal is both impressive and sad. The loss of an important individual, such as the matriarch, can disrupt the lives of a herd for a very long time. And what a tragedy for the world would be the death of the very last elephant, the end of a dynasty of giants that once roamed Africa from coast to coast. long march towards the rivers, the clans have gathered and are following a network of pathways, trampling the vegetation. But this tide of elephants ebbs and flows over different paths each year, always allowing the land to recover. The matriarchs are leading the females to the best feeding and good water. There are unborn calves to nourish. The 
journey ends in exhilaration for every family, and the two calves can hardly wait to get to the river ahead. For the next three months of the dry season, the matriarch will hold them in this newfound luxury. Drinking may seem the only thing on their minds, but there's no chaos here. They all know each other. The calves have been on the march for the first six months of their lives. Perhaps they sense the journey's over and can spend more energy on play. But in the oppressive heat, they quickly tire and seek shade. All the elephants are weary and ready to sleep. Large ears cool the blood and shut out the world. But they don't sleep for long. A nap is sufficient by day, and being heavy, it often takes a moment or two to get out of bed. Not until even the sleepiest are on their feet will the matriarch lead the herd out of the shade, making sure they're all together. But sometimes mistakes happen. This calf is lost, perhaps left behind, still sleeping. He must find his mother. He sees a matriarch and goes to greet a calf. But they're not his family, and he's turned away. All he can do is keep searching. Now that new calves have begun to claim their mother's attention, older calves often get separated. Back in the bull's area, the solemnity contrasts with the busy family life of the matriarchal herds. Little remains now of the old bull that died. But relics, such as this tusk, are still plucked from the mud and fondled. Perhaps it's only regarded as a toy, a familiar comforting shape with a reassuring scent of elephant. Maybe it has deeper meaning as a memento of a lost companion, evoking a memory of that strange exploration of his fallen body.
our minds search so readily for symbols. How poignant it is to consider that this creature is handling the very object for which elephants are persecuted. At the river, the matriarch is leading her herd on a new adventure. She perhaps remembers that the feeding is better on the other side. Snorkeling with their trunks, elephants swim reasonably well, as might be expected of these relations of sea cows, the dugongs and manatees. They are fat and buoyant. Their skulls, though massive, have large nasal and sinus cavities to keep them afloat. But this young bull lacks the confidence to follow, while his family floats away to the distant shore. Knee-deep is as far as he intends to venture. But neither the swimmers nor the calf can know the herd has crossed a political frontier. The North Shore is another country, Namibia, where elephants are persecuted. From Botswana, the lonely non-swimmer calls to them in alarm. They respond to his distress from this land where they are now fair game for hunters, poachers and traders. But their concern is for the abandoned calf and fortunately sets them swimming back to the young bull and safety. The current is strong. The calves have scarcely had time to rest. Exhausted, the youngsters struggle across. Only the reassured calf's continual refusal stops the herd attempting to swim back. In effect, his timidity may have saved his family from untimely death by bullet. These elephants migrating through their ancestral ranges in Botswana, may be among the last truly free elephants, and they could also become the last generation of their kind. Competition and conflict with people means the land they inherited is ceasing to be theirs. But imagine Africa without elephants, their dignity, intelligence, and almost human concern for their dead. In such an empty land, we could only reflect on the loss of so much that we hadn't time to understand. Wildlife of the feathered variety next on BBC One with a bird in the nest.